Hello everyone. A very good evening to all of you. Can you please confirm whether my voice is audible to all of you? The screen is also visible to everyone. Good evening, sunshine. Okay, I hope so. It is audible and visible both. So today we are again continuing with the unit 2A and 2B. Of course, so far these many sessions we were dealing with cell organelles and protein targeting. So as of now, cell organelles questions we have done most of the things. And right now, protein targeting and cytoskeletal system. Of course, protein targeting also I had discussed number of questions with you. Some of which is remaining, which I'll be discussing today, along with that cytoskeletal system. Okay. And uh, I hope so you have studied that accessory proteins, cytoskeletal accessory proteins. If you remember, I had told you to just revise and come so that it will be easy for you to answer it. Did you all revise that accessory proteins part of cytoskeletal system? Yes. Okay. Let's start with our first question. That is, the tetrapeptide Kedal sequence is considered to be a well-known retrieval signal for several newly synthesized proteins. This process is mediated through a specific receptor. So we have Kedal interaction with that. Any signal, any single amino acid change in this tetrapeptide is not allowed in terms of its binding with its receptors and its subsequent retention in specific organelles. Whereas secretory proteins are devoid of such tetrapeptide. So from this observation, you need to identify the localization of the receptor for this tetrapeptide sequence. That means you have to identify the Kedal receptor. Right? Yes, where it could be. A uh, very good evening, Anusha and Surender. I hope so you remember in my last session, I had given you a detailed description regarding the Kedal containing protein along with the receptor. In fact, I have shared a diagram also with you, an image with you, the movement and all that is being taken place. Yes. Can anyone tell me the answer for this question? Uh, Niharika, Surinder, Anusha. Anyone else is adding your answers over here? Good evening, Saujanya. Okay, Suresh. Now, this is a very easy question, but believe this is a four marks question. Just if you are aware of what is a Kedal sequences, what is its receptor, the things are going to be much easier. Very good evening, Aishwarya. Any further answers from your side? Okay, Sunshine. Okay, Aishwarya. Fine. The correct answer to this question will be a very easy endoplasmic reticulum. So, your Kedal receptors are present only in the endoplasmic reticulum or does it uh, present in any other organelle? Thus, Kedal receptors are present only in the endoplasmic reticulum or it is present in any other organelle. Last time we had discussed with respect to COP1, COP2 vesicles, the pH of uh, different compartments. Do you remember that? So in that case, do we have the receptor location in any of the other organelles present? <clears throat> yes. No, COP1, COP2, clathrin, all those are uh, your transport vesicles or secretory vesicles. So here I'm asking you the location in the organelle other than endoplasmic reticulum. Yes, it should be Golgi as well. So if you remember, I said you Kedal receptor is something that usually shuttles between these two compartments. 
Why? Because by mistakenly, if any protein goes to the Golgi, it has to come back. So for that purpose, these receptors are considered. Okay. Yes, 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 Niharika. Yes, Sunshine. Yeah, intermediate compartment, more precisely speaking, we can say Golgi. Okay, Aishwarya. Fine. Another question to you, yet this is a very easy question. And this question came in the recent exam. You have to identify the correct combination, the organelles with their corresponding function. Golgi, nucleolus, peroxisome, endoplasmic reticulum. Last exam only this question came, I think in afternoon session, I guess. Just see four marks and such an easy question. I guess I can expect correct answers from most of you or all of you. Because we have already done with organelles, right? And majority of protein targeting and organelle functions also we had discussed in previous sessions. So I guess this you might be able to remember which organelle what function. Okay, I can see one answer came so far from Suresh. What about others? Is, is it a tough question for you all? No, right? An easy one. But yet I am yet to receive the right answers. Okay, Niharika, Saujanya, Surender, fine. Any other answers? Okay, fine. Anusha, just remember if ER and Golgi are together, what are their functions? Nucleolus, part of nucleus, what should be their function? Peroxisome. Which is basically uh, composed of a number of enzymes. So what should be the answer over here? Okay, Sunshine, Aishwarya, Suresh and Hemlata. Anyone else would like to give your answers here? But anyone else would like to change your answers over here? Whatever you have seen, given. Okay. Let me give you the correct answer over here. The correct answer over here is two. And I can see most of you had given the correct answers. Of course, some of you have some confusion somewhere. See, so option two is the correct answer over here. Golgi compartment. It is responsible for what? O-linked glycosylation. Right? You know... N-linked glycosylation and O-linked glycosylation. Are you all aware of these two? It's okay, Anusha, because from mistakes only we are learning something, right? So that we will not make the same mistake again. Okay, don't worry. Yeah, anyone is aware of these two types of glycosylation, N-linked glycosylation, O-linked glycosylation? Uh, specifically the organelles I am asking. Wh which organelles you will find these glycosylation taking place? Yes, Niharika. Because this also I had discussed with you in my previous sessions, if you remember. Okay, Niharika is saying N-linked is present or occurs in endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. Only endoplasmic reticulum or do we have any other? Any other organelle is present? Yes. Endoplasmic reticulum plus Golgi. Okay. These are the two organelles you will find N-linked glycosylation because the addition of sugars takes place within the endoplasmic reticulum. 
thereafter deletion and replacement of sugars like further modification of proteins takes place in golgi compartments right and yes you are correct o linked glycosylation exclusively occurs in the where golgi compartment so o why because of the hydroxyl group present in serine threonine n linked by because of the asparagine residues present in that conserved amino acid sequence right i hope so there is no confusion over here next what we are having nucleolus if you remember nucleolus is an example of a membrane less structure present within the nucleus which is not only responsible for ribosome assembly also rrna synthesis so we can say that preparation for the translation phase of the fundamental process right so once you are confident with this a to 2 you can easily omit 1 and 4 next you have to think of remaining statements or remaining combinations next what you are having peroxisomes so peroxisomes means what what is the significance of peroxisome organelle what is the significance of peroxisome as an organelle like we are aware about golgi we are aware about nucleus what could be the function of peroxisomes do we have any specific enzymes over there if so what is the function of those enzymes yes oxygen utility that is already shown over here how they are doing so do we have any specific enzymes present in the peroxisome because anything in excess is not good for health similarly if oxygen is more it results in ros formation and we all are very much aware of the fact that this ros or the oxygen free radicals they are responsible for damaging the cell organelles so to prevent this we are having certain enzymes present in the peroxisom yes absolutely correct we are having catalases and various other enzymes present then coming to endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum it is the site for lipid synthesis so one question to you all endoplasmic reticulum as you all are aware it is made up of two types like it is categorized as two types rer and scr that is rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum so among these two which one undergoes the lipid synthesis among rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum which one is responsible for lipid synthesis absolutely correct niharika yes sunshine so we have smooth endoplasmic reticulum exclusively for lipid synthesis okay so this is the differences among the organelles with their function so uh, you can also expect cellular organelles based upon the match the following type apart from that as we have discussed earlier statement based questions also you can expect okay so that completes our second question next question following statements we have made regarding protein trafficking in the cells cargo selection occurs when core proteins bind to the sorting signals either directly or indirectly via adapter complexes protein export from er is exclusively mediated through cop2 coated vesicles identical core proteins is used in the exocytic pathway or endocytic pathway. tethering of vesicles to the membrane involves small guanosine triphosphatases triphosphatases of raf family of proteins and lastly
clathrin coated vesicles will be transporting proteins from plasma membrane to transgolgi or to late endosomes from this five statements you have to filter out the correct combination of statements do you require uh, the options the combinations you want or by reading the statement itself you can get the answer read the statements first carefully i will give you the options no problem just read the options uh, sorry statements <clears throat> now this is also somewhere related to endoplasmic reticulum if you have uh, gone through the previous youtube sessions based on unit 2 that is specifically the organelles and protein targeting you might be aware that a number of questions comes from this endoplasmic reticulum in different ways match the following statement based experimental questions you can expect so remember endoplasmic reticulum is one of the important organelle from examination point of view yes okay cartoon world b is correct you are saying okay i will provide you the combination c this is the combinations okay a b d a b e b c d and c d e okay so what should be the correct combination now okay i can see now some answers are coming up okay b and d i am seeing coming up okay showing you the statements once again if you want to have a look into the statements read the statements carefully all the statements maybe what you think necessarily may not be maybe correct or not okay hemlata sunshine and ashwarya okay hemlata then anyone else damini anusha yes anyone else want to give the answers niharika i think cartoon world you right now you got some combinations right so apart from b is there any other statements which you can say as correct d is correct you are saying okay you okay, can harika opted for b d and e okay well, without making you further confused let me give you the answers but uh, i did not get the correct answer i guess see what is the correct answer over here is statements a b and d now let's check it up how these statements are correct first statement cargo selection occurs when coat proteins bind to the sorting signals either directly or indirectly via adapter complexes is not this statement correct is not this statement correct do you remember uh, clathrin coated pits how does it works specifically if i give you an example like uh, i can say ldl receptor how does it works does it matches the first statement and if you remember i have also said you that ldl receptor is having a conserved amino acid sequence that will help in binding to that of a ligand and in case if that sequence is interrupted or mutated there are chances that it may lead to what it will may it will prevent the binding of ligand and receptor so 
Owing to that concept, we can say that statement A is correct. Do you all agree with me, everyone? Do you all agree with me? Yes, are you able to understand what I'm trying to say? If you look into the second statement, this is, I can, I can say that majority of you have said the correct answer, right, regarding the COP2 quoted vesicles, right? So I don't think so I need any explanation for this one. This is a correct one. Then when you go for the third statement, I guess this also everyone agree with me that this is an incorrect statement. Identical code proteins are used for both exocytic and endocytic pathway. No. There is no identical code proteins present for two different pathways. Okay, if you remember, we are having clathrin code. If you remember, we are also having retromeric code. So depending upon the organelles, the code proteins varies. Next. Tithering of the vesicles involves RAP family of proteins. What do you understand by tithering? Tithering of vesicles means what? Anyone remember the meaning of this particular statement? Tithering of vesicles. That means what? If anyone remembers... We can say attachment or linkage of vesicles to that of a membrane, right? That is how your membrane fusion occurs. Absolutely correct, Surendra. We are having snare proteins for that, okay? Snare proteins are the major proteins, but tethering proteins are different. In fact, we are having two different categories of uh, tethering proteins. I'll come to that point also. Now, going to the statement E. What does it say? Clathrin coated vesicles transport proteins from plasma membrane to transgolgi to late endosome. The thing is that if you just focus on this compartments, plasma membrane, transgolgi, late endosome, it is correct. But what they are saying? They are saying that they are transporting the proteins in this direction. That is correct. See, I have a table for that. COP2 vesicles that helps in the transport of components or proteins in the forward direction. And these are the accessory proteins necessary for that. And this is the GTP's protein that provides the energy for the transportation. Now, if you look into the COP1 vesicles, they are moving in the reverse orientation. Right. Then, next what you are having Clathrin coated pits. So it can move from transgolgi to endosome or plasma membrane to endosome. But the three organelles together, that will not come. So that's the reason statement E is incorrect. I guess most of you are getting why the statement E is incorrect. Because I, I saw majority of you were supporting the statement E. Now you understood the differences. Got it, right? Okay, so this is the RAP model of uh, tethering the protein. So if you see, this is our transport vesicles, which is having the RAP GT pieces, right? And they are connected with the help of fibrous tethering proteins. Now, if you look into the example of fibrous tethering proteins, we are having gall genes EEA1. Similarly, if you look into multi-protein tethering complex, there are also a second category of tethering proteins that helps in the binding of transport vesicles towards the membrane. And for that, you are having the example exocystin trapi. And of course, I saw many of you we are saying about V-snare and T-snare. Those are the proteins present within the vesicles that helps in binding. These are also yet another category of proteins that helps in membrane fusion. Okay. So, if you look into this image, this is how the fusion takes place. If you see, this is your vesicle that contains the cargo and the receptor. You are having V-snare proteins present. Of course, RAB GTP is also present. Then, you are having this protein Combining with a target membrane. It could be any membrane. 
wherever the membrane fusion needs to take place. So correspondingly, you will be having the T snare protein and the Ram effector protein. So what they will do, they will try to pull this uh, vesicle towards itself. That is known as docking. As you can see, T-snare, V-snare is getting fused with each other. After that, what happens? Once they are bound, since Rab is a GTP protein, so it will undergo hydrolysis and remains in the cytosol bound with another protein known as GDI. So what is this function of GDI? It will keep the RAP protein in the inactive state unless and until there is a requirement. So when there is a requirement, this GDP gets converted back to GT. Okay, so this is how your uh, membrane fusion takes place. So if you see GDI, the full form is GDP dissociation inhibitor. In fact, these proteins can bound to the GDP bound form, not only of RAP protein, but also of raw protein. Raw is a protein, again, they are involved in some cytoskeletal changes. Okay. So these are by nature GT pieces, which not only prevent the exchange, prevent the exchange means which exchange? GDP to GTP exchange. They not only prevent this exchange, but also the same time prevent the small GT pieces from localizing to the corresponding membrane. Because unless and until it reaches the corresponding destination, it should not be activated. So the movement and the exchange both are inhibited. Inhibited by whom? By this inhibitor, GDP dissociation inhibitor. Is this question clear to everyone? Overall? The question is clear to everyone. Yes, Hemlata, that will be enough. But I will still suggest you to go for some reference book also simultaneously. Where, because right now you are having the time to go through reference book. But when your exam gets uh, near, you will not get time. You will have time only for uh, revision only. So at that time, we cannot go for books. Right now, since you are having the time, go through the reference books. Okay. Okay, good evening, legend. Okay, it's clear to everyone, right? Okay, fine. A very simple question to all of you. In the context of protein import into the nucleus, which molecule is responsible for releasing the cargo from the importing receptor? Now, this question again came in the recent exam. So you have RAS, ROE, RAN and ROC. The purpose, why I had added this question here? Because I want to know the specification of all the proteins given in the option. I'm pretty sure that you will be giving the correct answers. That is okay. But I want to know the definitions of all the proteins. Yes. Go ahead. Niharika, Ramda, Sunshine. Okay. Surrender, Aishwarya, I expect it because I, I guess no one will be there who are going to give the incorrect answer over here. Okay, so the correct answer over here is RAN protein. Now my question to all of you over here is, if RAN protein is responsible for the import inside the nucleus, they have mentioned about importing receptor. Do you remember the name of the importing receptor? Yes, Bhargavi and Hemlata. Do you remember the name of importing receptor? Again, this is a part of a nuclear protein targeting where I had given you the details how the protein passes through the receptor. And what is the receptor? Does anyone remember the name of the receptor? No. Jeff, the function of Jeff is to exchange. What it will do? It will convert GDP to GTP, right? That is the function. I'm asking you the receptor. Suppose if this is the cargo, it has to be taken inside the nucleus. It should have a receptor present. I'm asking you the name of this receptor. Yeah, importance is correct. Yes, 
we can precisely call it as karyoferins if you remember we had discussed about karyoferins which is a transport receptor having two types alpha and beta sorry importin and exportin so currently we are focusing on importin so importin alpha beta is responsible for carrying the protein inside the nucleus i hope so you are getting it right yeah nls what you said is correct that nls signal should be present in this protein okay the nls protein uh, nls signal should be present in this protein then only it will be directed towards the nucleus okay i am really happy to see that you remember many of the things related to nuclear targeting remember the things is very crucial when you go for exam but you are remembering that's very good so this is the answer so do you know the functions of ras ro and rock of course ran you already told me i have also given you the explanation do you know the functions of ras protein ro a protein and rock protein anyone anyone <clears throat> ras protein i guess many of you might be aware absolutely correct him lata they are specifically for signaling cell signaling purposes in fact you are having ras exclusive pathway which is responsible for carrying out cell division ro a is termination that comes in context of transcription i guess that you are saying right hemlata and rock you might not have heard see ras protein as mentioned before they are involved for signaling purpose responsible for carrying out cell division ro protein as i told you just before during the membrane fusion that it is a family of gtp protein plays an important role in organization of cytoskeletal system that is specifically speaking actin cytoskeleton and motility then uh, ran protein so i have already told you you have already told me but remember one point it is a kind of monomeric gtp protein belonging to ras super family okay then the last option was ro associated kinases that you are having rock one and rock two both of them are kinases what kind of kinases serine threonine kinases so that are downstream targets of ro a so once ro a is activated it leads to the activation of rock 1 and rock 2 so si simultaneously they are responsible for what for organizing the cytoskeletal system only so accordingly you are having ro a ro b and ro c okay so rocks are involved in diverse activities not only in actin cytoskeleton organization but also helps in cell adhesion motility proliferation and apoptosis remodeling of your extracellular matrix as well as smooth muscle contraction okay so the major function of this ro protein is organizing the actin cytoskeleton apart from that it is having all this other functions okay i hope so uh, the things are clear and this row is not uh, related to the termination process of transcription because if you remember in transcription you are having row dependent and row independent termination that is a different one this is a different don't get confused uh yes cartoon world it is involved in that okay organization fifth question to you membrane enclosed organelles often have a characteristic position in the cytosol so if you take into consideration as cell every cell is having all the organelles and when we speak of organelles they are having a specific position where it needs to be placed so in animal cells for example golgi apparatus is located close to the nucleus maybe you might have seen the image right 
So which component is directly involved in ensuring correct localization in animal cells? That means who is responsible for carrying your uh, cell organelles to the correct position? Is it actin skeleton, microtubules, nucleolus or peroxisomes? Which one should be the correct answer here? Which protein is responsible for localization? Okay. I can see Surinder, Ramdas and Hemlata has given the answers. Sunshine. Okay. Anyone else would like to give your inputs? I, I am pretty sure that you no one is going to opt for nucleolus because just now I have given you the function. Peroxisome also I told you what is the function. Now the tug of war will be between an actin cytoskeleton and microtubules. So for that if you understand or remember the properties or functional aspects of these two proteins you'll be able to give the answer yes that i can completely relate uh, sunshine that there should be a confusion between one and two but if you have studied that comparison table from the car book which i have already shared with you in the ppt things will be more clear to you Yes, Saujenia, Karen, Legend. Anyone else are giving the answers? Okay. So the correct answer over here is microtubules. Always remember one thing. I know why there is a confusion. Because they have mentioned the uh, movement and we know that actin cytoskeleton is specifically responsible for motility. But the organal translocation I had mentioned over here that is mainly carried out by microtubules, not by skeleton. Cytoplasmic movements that is cytoplasmic streaming and all those things are carried out by your actin cytoskeleton. Whereas the organal translocation is carried out exclusively by microtubules only. I hope so. You will not get confused further. Am I clear to you? Whoever has given one as the answer and sunshine, you were confused between the two. I hope so. You will not have further confusions. Here they have specifically asked for the organal localization. So when it comes to organal localization, remember... It is microtubules. See, in mammals, a single Golgi apparatus will be located near the cell nucleus, closer to the centrosome. You know centrosome is known as what? Are you aware that centrosome, we, call, we have another name for centrosome over here? That also I had told you when I was uh, discussing with you regarding the polymerization and depolymerization of microtubules. Anyone remember? Absolutely correct, Suresh. Yes, centrosome is otherwise known as mTOC. Now, what is this mTOC? Microtubule organizing center. So, these tubular connections are responsible for linking the stats together and localization and this tubular connections is carried out by microtubules. In fact, Golgi microtubules contribute to their structure and maintenance once the membranes have moved inward. Okay. In fact, it was seen that in experiments, microtubules are depolymerized. As microtubules gets depolymerized, your Golgi apparatus loses the mutual connections and become individual stacks throughout the cytoplasm. Why do we call it, it as a stacks? Because we are having cis-Golgi network, medial-Golgi network, trans-Golgi network. Then you are having the sister name, the projections. Right? So that is what we call it as an individual stats. Okay? 
next question to you okay this is just a reminder for watson junoon scholarship programs whoever is opting for uh, uh, csar or gate exam you will be getting one year coaching and not only that you will be having access to all the workshops in fact global and national workshops that is being conducted by biotechnica then additionally you will be having access to art programming internship with life project hands on if you go into stores at biotechnica.org you will find number of certification courses present you can choose among four and go for it then you will have direct access to our coaching experts in whatsapp number so whenever you are having a doubt you can post your query in the whatsapp also then one vip pass to a crispr conference which is going to be held in the near future so if you want to know any further details regarding this scholarship program please call us on this toll free number or you can visit this stores.biotechnica.org okay so just a reminder for this next next question is beating of cilia is regulated by what actin myosin coffelin and nexin beating of cilia is regulated by what again another easy question but still you have to understand what exactly occurs and what is the structure of cilia and flagella beating of cilia means what what do you understand by this term beating of cilia what do you understand by this i can see answers coming as 1 1 first tell me what is the meaning of this beating of cilia strokes movement of cilia do you know the structure of cilia and flagella yes hemlata it is there do you know the structural explanation of cilia and flagella yes yeah, ciliary movement only the movement the locomotion we can say yes one feature is 9 plus 2 arrangement so this 9 plus 2 arrangement is for what microtubules or microfilaments what is said is correct sunshine 9 plus 2 arrangement so this arrangement is for what is it for actin or is it for microtubules okay i got another word from your side that is axonin that is also absolutely correct now can anyone tell me what is an axonin is what is an axonin is yes 9 plus 2 arrangement is for microtubules what is an axonin what is an axonin so when we understood one fact that it is related to somewhere microtubules so we can easily omit these two right and coffelin being an accessory proteins to carrying out a specific process then what is left for you you are having nexin so what should be the answer over here nexin is the correct answer over here how see first let me differentiate between the structure of ciliary and flagellar not differentiate the overall structure of ciliary and flagellar axonin so this is the axonin okay as you told me it is having 9 plus 2 arrangement so that's why you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 9 is there and inside or centrally you are having 2 that's the reason you are having this 9 plus 2 arrangement so is this 9 plus 2 arrangement is conserved in all the species 
yes you are correct uh, surender yes niharika does this 9 plus 2 arrangement is conserved in all the species yes sunshine Does anyone, can anyone answer this question? Yes. 9 plus 2 arrangement is not conserved. It varies from species to species. Now, if you look into the arrangement, so the 9 outer doublets which we see is made up of a A tubule and a B tube. If you have a close vision, a tubule is having a complete circle, complete circle of around 13 protofilaments. And if you see the B tubule, it is partial. So that means it will be having an arrangement of 10 to 11. Right? Then what you are having, if you look into this image, see, the doublets will be connected to each other by this next scene bridge. Okay, and protruding from this A tubule, you are having the dynein arms, inner dynein arm and an outer dynein arm, right? Then this extensions you see, this is known as radial spokes, which provides a connecting link between the outer doublet towards the central sheath. Okay, so this is what the description for your axoneme structure. So if you see over here, the fundamental structure of both cilia and flagella becomes your axoneme, which is composed of microtubules with their associated proteins. As you told me, it is a 9 plus 2 arrangement composed of a central pair of microtubules surrounded by 9 outer doublets. The two fused microtubules composed of Two doublets, I mean two structures. One is A tubule, which is a complete microtubule of 13 protofilaments. And the other one is B tubule, which is incomplete, that is having around 10 to 11 microfilaments. Apart from that, they are connected to each other by radial spokes and next in being the bridge. No doubt, dynein is responsible for carrying out the motor activity. Okay, that is correct. But in this question, we don't have dynein as an option. So somewhere a closely related answer is what? We can call it as a nexin. We cannot even call it as a coffelin. Neither we call it as a myosin. Neither we call it as an active. So what is left for us? We Left for us is nexin. So sometimes what happens, you know, you won't get a direct answer. But you have to link the answer with your understanding. And this is an example of one such question. I hope so this clears it. Whoever was having the confusion. And yes, someone has mentioned that pattern will be varying. In case of flat forms, you will see 9 plus 1 arrangement is there. And in case of Asian horseshoes, crab, eel and mayfly, you will find 9 plus 0 pattern. That means uh, they will not have a central microtube. Okay, they will have only that outer doublets, nine outer doublets. Okay, clear now to everyone. Uh, okay, fine. <clears throat> okay, this is yet another uh, combination for you, the three cytoskeletal system. You have to choose, uh, you have to find the cytoskeletal proteins on one side, the definitions on the other side. What should be the correct combination over here? Uh, try changing your settings, Niharika. 
Is the question visible to all of you? The columns and the combinations. Which one is not visible to you, Niharika? The combinations or the question? See, I'm providing you the enlarged picture. Table. Okay, that's what I have enlarged it for you. Have a check. Okay, fine. Okay, okay, fine. Understood, Sunshine. That's the reason I have just enlarged the table. Okay. Taken directly from the question itself. So maybe that's the reason it appears to be blur. Yes. What should be the answer now? Can anyone give? Okay, I can see common answer coming up. Three. Could you get it, Niharika? The combinations. Okay, so let me give you the answer now so that I can see most of you have given the correct answer. Few who could not give the answer, this is the answer for you. So answer is three. Now how we can choose an answer as three? Okay, Niharika, Anchal, Aishwarya, okay, fine. A is the intermediate filaments. We know that intermediate filaments has got uh, no function with respect to any movement. It just provides the mechanical strength to the cell. Right? So in that case, you can easily omit these two options because it is related to locomotion and position. But in this case, you will find that A is for option 3, statement 3 that is providing mechanical strength. Next, what we are having? B for 1. So, microtubules. Determine the shape of the cell surface. Uh, sorry, B for 2. That means this one only. That we have already discussed in a, one of the previous question. Positioning the membrane enclosed organelles and providing intracellular transport. Then what you are having? C for 1. So, obviously as I told you, actin filaments are necessary for locomotion. But when we speak of organelles, it is being carried out by your microtubules only. Okay. Is it clear now? And this if you see, the microfilament, the microtubule and the intermediate filaments, you will find that microfilaments is made up of actin as the monomeric units. Microtubule is made up of tubulin dimers as the monomeric units. And similarly, intermediate filaments involves the formation of protofilaments. That means it is made up of different proteins like keratin and acidic keratin, basic keratin, lamins, neurofilaments. All this becomes the example for intermediate filaments. So depending upon the option, the monomeric units will be constructed. Next, what happens? Uh, if you take into consideration all these three, they are connected to each other by weak non-covalent interactions. That is responsible for carrying out rapid assembly and disassembly. Because you might be aware that assembly and disassembly is a part of a cellular organization. Right? Cytoskeletal proteins repeatedly undergo assembly and undergo disassembly. That is their function. Depending upon the requirement of the cell. Right. Next, this is the comparison table of uh, microtubules, intermediate filaments and actin filaments. So, if you see, this is a very important table that will provide you with a better understanding with the 
uh, remaining what you can say a combination between the three cytoskeletal proteins so if you see microtubules subunits incorporated into the polymer we are having alpha beta which is gtp bound whereas actin filaments they are having actin monomers atp bound and we know that intermediate filaments does not have any kind of atp or gtp present then preferential site for incorporation well uh, if you take into consideration microtubules or microfilaments both of them are having plus end and minus end and both the portions the addition takes place but it is in the plus end where the frequency of addition is more so that's why you are having plus end and if you are aware in this case when we speak of actin filaments the plus end is known as barbed end similarly for minus end you are having pointed ends that is the names given in actin filaments polarity of course since it is having plus and minus definitely they will have a polarity but intermediate filaments will not have any polarity because they are not moving anything right then enzymatic activity here gtps will be there here atps will be there motor proteins you call it as a kinesin and dynein and in this case you are having myosin here you don't have any uh, Uh, because as i told you earlier there is no no requirement of locomotion so obviously there is no requirement for motor proteins when it comes to microtubules associated proteins are available here also actin binding proteins are available in this case also takins are present then uh, distribution present in all eukaryotes here also all eukaryotes but intermediate filaments present in animals function so we have already discussed subcellular localization present in cytoplasm which one your microtubules and intermediate filaments you'll find in cytoplasm plus nucleus actin filaments are present in cytoplasm so this is very important table from examination point of view you can come across any question based on that just wanted to ask you do you know what are this microtubule associated proteins can anyone give me the examples of microtubule associated proteins they are nothing but your accessory proteins which i told you to study and come uh, for this session anyone remembers at least give some examples you know that microtubules are having plus end minus end there are specific proteins which is directed towards the plus end there are specific proteins which are directed towards the minus end any examples no kinesin and dynein is fine um, sunshine they are responsible for the movement that i completely agree with you that becomes the part of motor proteins what i am asking is accessory proteins that means if you remember i told you they are involved in rapid assembly and disassembly so for that purpose what proteins you will have uh niharika what you told is correct profilin coffilin but it comes under actin binding proteins example of actin binding proteins maps do any no one remembers maps no one remember example okay do one thing yes you are correct sir and the tau proteins are there yes the turk protein complex is there absolutely correct gelsoline will be there if you remember right so what you do is study those accessory protein yeah statmin is also there study these accessory proteins and come to the class next session we will be focusing mainly on cytoskeletal system along with that maybe i will start with the 2c that is organization of chromosomes okay do study and come these two portions protein targeting if any questions are further present i will definitely add up otherwise we will continue with cytoskeletal system and organization of chromosomes in my next session okay yes formin is there saujania that is coming again under your actin binding proteins okay
Okay then. Thank you so much everyone. See you again in the next session.